Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you grouping or track grouping in Reaper. Now, in a previous video, I showed you temporary groups where we can select multiple tracks and they'll behave as a group for volume, mute, solo, or anything else on this track. But this is temporary. You have to first select the tracks, and it's not very flexible. If you want something more permanent, we're going to use track grouping. If we go up here to the track menu, we can see down here that track grouping is enabled. And in most situations, we can just leave that on. As you'll see, we can use the shift key a bit later to disable any grouping. So we can leave this on most of the time. But we want to focus on this option right here, the track grouping parameters. And we can trigger this with the keyboard shortcut Shift G. So let's select these drum tracks, hit Shift G, and that opens up this dialog. Now, this dialog works a bit differently than other dialogs in Reaper because it's constantly updating depending on the tracks we choose. We can see right now it's grouping for three selected tracks, but if we choose just one, it changes how the dialog is viewed. Or five, let's put it back to these three and let's choose all the parameters to group. So now if we deselect our tracks, our volume is still grouped, our mute, our solo, our polarity, record, panning, all these parameters are now grouped on these three tracks. And we can see they're grouped by these ribbons around the parameters. The red ones, we could change that appearance in the preferences. If we scroll down under appearance to track control panels, we could change the track grouping indicators from ribbons to lines on edge, which looks like this, or turn them off completely, like this. But they're still going to behave as a group. But let's leave them as ribbons. And they show up like this, letting us know that these parameters are grouped. Now the color we're seeing is red based on group one. So if we choose the piano and synth, shift G, we can create a different group, group two, and group all the parameters for that. And that shows up as green, a separate group for the piano and synth. So each group has their own color. And the 64 groups to choose from. And we can even name them if we want. Let's change group one to drums and group two to instruments so we can remember what they do. And notice how this dialog constantly updates based on the tracks we choose. The drum tracks are not in the instrument group, so it only shows up when we choose the drum group. Now, one of the powerful things about track grouping is we can just select certain parameters. So let's choose our drums, switch it to none, and just choose volume master and slave and pan master and slave. We'll get back to master and slave in a bit. But if we just choose volume and pan, it's only going to group those parameters. So if we adjust our volume or our pan, those are grouped. But if we choose mute or solo, those parameters are not grouped. And there's no ribbons around those parameters, just the volume and pan. So we can create certain groups just to do certain things. For example, Let's select the drums again, Shift G. Let's switch this to group three. 
and name it Drums Record. Now we can set up this group just to arm our record button. So now, if we hit the record button on our drums, on any track, all the drums go into record, making it a lot easier if we're doing a live session, we're recording drums, we can just hit the record button on one of them and all the tracks go into record. We'll hit it again to take them out of record. So each group can do completely different things. Now we could also reverse our volume and pan controls. Let's go back to piano and synth. It opens up to instruments. Let's make it none and choose volume and pan. But for just one of them, let's choose the synth. We can reverse the volume and reverse the pan. So now, if we bring down the volume of the piano, it brings up the volume of the synth, or vice versa. So they're always moving in the opposite or reverse direction, which is really useful for balancing out different sounds. More of this and less of this, or less of this and more of this. And it'll work the same way with panning. If we pan the piano to the left, it pans the synth to the right. Or if we pan it to the right, it pans the synth to the left. So they work in reverse. Now let's take a look at the master and slave relationship. Let's go back to our drums. It opens up with the drum group. And let's set up our kick to be a master and slave for all the parameters. But for the snare and hi-hat, let's just make them slaves. So now, if we adjust the kick, it controls the volume, mute, and solo. But if we adjust the snare or the hi-hat, they work individually. So our kick is the master of these tracks, but these tracks, they're just slaves. So they can be controlled by this track. So it's very helpful for working with a group of tracks. We grab the first one for a group or the others to work individually. Let's do the same thing for the piano and synth. With our instruments, let's switch the piano to be both a master and slave and the synth to just be a slave. And again, we can choose it with individual parameters not just all of them. So now, if we adjust the piano, it behaves as a group. But if we adjust the synth, it works individually. But we could also layer the master-slave relationship. Let's create another track. Let's bring it up to the top and name it master. And let's group this track. Starting with the drums, let's make it just a master, not a master and a slave. Let's do the same thing for the instruments. Make it just a master. So now, this track is a master for both groups. Our volume, our mute, our solo, and pan. But it's not a slave. So if we adjust the kick track, which is a master and a slave, it only controls the drums, not the master. And the same with the piano or instruments. This one controls both of them. This one behaves independently. But the master, being just a master, controls everything. It's never a slave to the other masters. So we could layer the master-slave relationship very easily. Let's select the drums again and clear it, and we could also adjust our default flags. This is very useful if you typically group certain parameters. Let's say you always do volume, pan, and mute, but not solo, or polarity, or width. Let's also do the automation mode. Let's say we use 
these parameters very often. We could save them as a default right down here. So now let's clear it out and select our drums, open the group. And now instead of hitting all or none or master or slave, we can just hit load default flags. And it chooses the parameters that we saved over here, making it very useful for creating groups very quickly. And it's also very useful for the grouping matrix. Let's go to the view menu and choose the grouping matrix. And right from here, we could see all 64 of our groups and create the groups right in this window. Here's all the tracks. Let's select the kick, snare, and hi-hat to be our drums group, the piano and synth to be our instruments group. We can create groups that quickly, but they're based on the default flags. So if we right-click the drums, it opens it up, letting us know the parameters for that group. Do the same for the instruments, just right click and shows us the parameters. So we can change it from here, but it's going to use the default flags by default when we just choose them from here. And if you want to see more information in this window, we can show the group details right here. And now we see each group and their parameters. So we can add parameters like the solo or the record arm in each one of our groups. And also choose the master or slave in here. Click it once for both, click it again for master, and click it again for slave. So we can see everything in this window. As I mentioned earlier, we don't really need to turn track grouping on and off. Because at any point, we could disable grouping with the shift key. So right now, with our drum group, it's grouped for the volume and mute and solo. But if we hold down shift, it's going to disable that behavior. So each track is going to work completely separately. So if I just want to mute the kick, I don't want to turn off track grouping, just hold down shift and I can mute just the kick, or a snare, or a piano, just the volume, separately from a synth, or together without the shift key. So the shift key disables any track grouping we set up. So that's grouping, or track grouping, in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Oh!